Be inspired with the special message from Bishop Macedo. Hello, my friends. May God bless all of you. And may this day be extraordinary in the life of each and every one of you. This is my prayer. I pray that your day may be extraordinary. May your life be wonderful today in Jesus' name. And we've been speaking about Abraham, and I'd like you to be attentive, to pay attention to, in the case of Abraham, when we said yesterday, when God spoke to Abraham, God chose Abraham and said to him, I am, I am Almighty God. There is no other God. There is just one God, which is the Almighty One. And he said more, Walk before me and be blameless. Please, pay close attention. Don't do anything else as you are listening to this live transmission. Think with me. Just think a little bit because this can change your life. The thoughts of God change anyone's life, anyone who wants to think like Him, anyone that submits their thoughts to His thoughts. You know, then God said like this afterwards, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will multiply you exceedingly. This is very strong. God said to Abraham, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. Then I was asking myself, I had been asking myself for a very long time already, oh my God, why did you say exceedingly? Why? Why did you say exceedingly? Because when you made heaven and earth, at the end of having created it all, you had created extraordinary things, magnificent things. There are no words to express the greatness of your works. And you said that everything was good. You created heaven and earth and saw that everything was good. You saw that it was good. You made the sun and the stars. You made the animals and everything. And you said you saw that it was good. But here, you said to Abraham, I will multiply you exceedingly. I remember that Jesus also, when he was approached by someone who said to him, Good master. And Jesus straight away corrected him and said, Only one is good, which is God. Only he is good. However, just here between us, if we were ever to speak with the Lord Jesus, with Him face to face, we would say, Oh, wonderful Master, isn't it? You are super great. You are extremely merciful. We would always appeal to a superlative adjective, which is to put emphasis in the word that you are trying to use to describe a person. For example, you who have been complimented once or twice, you know that. No, normally, nowadays, they don't just say, oh, you are beautiful. They say, wow, you are gorgeous. You look wonderful, isn't it? Which means you add up value to the person's beauty. 
when you say great is one thing, but when you say extraordinary, exceedingly, then you are adding up much more value to the word. And that's what God used to speak to Abraham. He didn't have to say exceedingly. No, he didn't have to. He just had to say, and now we will multiply you. I will multiply you. That's it. And that would already be exceedingly. He could have said, I will multiply you in a great way, which would already be something great. But when he said, I will multiply you exceedingly, God is here then adding much more value to what he was going to do to Abraham. Do you understand, my friend? Jesus also said that the devil, the thief, came to kill, steal, and destroy. But I came that you would have life. And then he adds up, and life more abundantly, which means Jesus strengthens the idea of what he is promising, of the greatness that he promises to those who believe and obey his word. And here God is saying to Abraham, I am the almighty God. So every power, it's not more or less, it's all of it, all the power, all the greatness of God. He simply is the almighty. And he revealed himself to Abraham this way. And then he said, walk before me and be blameless. Walk before me and be blameless, which means walk according to my thoughts and be perfect, be blameless. Because if you think, if we think as God does, then we are going to be perfect. That's it. And then he said even more, and I will make my covenant between me and you. And what was this covenant between God and Abraham? What was it like? It was the word, the word that was pledged. When we get married, we pledge our word as well on the altar. And there on the altar, we say, look, I will love you, I will protect you in health and in sickness and for rich or for poor. Whatever situation, I will be with you. I will be faithful to you, loyal to you. One says to the other, this is called covenant, marriage. In God's terms, it means covenant marriage. And this is what has to happen between us, between human beings, be it in marriage or in business, in everything that we do that involves the word that is pledged, then this word has to be honored. This is called covenant. That's what God made with Abraham. And I will make my covenant between me and you, which is the word. Between God and Abraham, there was a covenant. What was the covenant? The word. What connected God to Abraham and Abraham to God was this word, this covenant, this marriage, this matrimony. One honoring the word towards the other. If this came to pass, as it did, because God promised, then he said, I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you. I will multiply you greatly. Greatly, right? No, more than that. Exceedingly. Exceedingly. Jesus said, I came that you would have life and have it more abundantly. Which means he added up infinitely more to that promise, 
which is the pledge of the word of Jesus to his followers, to those who walk in his presence, to those who walk according to his will, with his thoughts. So, my friend, God answered me, God showed me, God revealed to me why he said exceedingly instead of just saying great. Because if he said, I will bless you greatly, would be more than enough. He didn't have to say exceedingly, no, because what he says is already enough. Jesus said, I am the, the way the truth and the life. He didn't have to say, I am a great way, long way. No, the way is already enough. I am the truth, that's it. He wouldn't have to say, I am indeed the truth. God didn't need to use a superlative adjective to express what he was trying to do. He doesn't have to use that. But with Abraham, he said, he used it. He said, and I will multiply you exceedingly. Exceedingly. You understand that, don't you? When you say great is one thing, but when you say exceedingly, then your imagination, your mind opens up. It reaches up to the sky. Why? Because you understand that it's something extremely great. And that's the idea that God passes on to us when we walk in His presence. When we walk in His presence, we walk in submission to His Word. We walk according to His Word, His thoughts. Sometimes we face problems and hardships, tribulations, all tribulations, all hardships, all the tribulations we face. God allows us to go through them so that we may learn, we may learn to hear His voice, to be attentive to His voice. I usually say that I only learn, I've always learned through, through tribulation, through beating up, that's the truth. So the older we get, the more experienced we get because we suffer more and the more we suffer, the more we learn. If there is no suffering, if there is no problems, if there is no hardships, then we are born, we grow, and we develop in a spoiled way, which means you grow up without any experience. So you get married to someone, and then you are going to want to be treated like a spoiled child, and then it won't work because you have your obligations towards your partner, then you have to embrace your responsibilities. You have to pledge your word on the altar and honor that word, be faithful to that word even before the hardships of life. We learn that with life, in our daily life. For example, God did that to the Israelites. When God took the Israelites out of Egypt, those people are slaves. And when he allowed them to go through the Red Sea, where did they go? Where did they enter? A garden? Did they enter already in the Promised Land? No. They were 40 years in the desert, in a really painful, difficult desert. But God was with them, and that's what mattered. God wanted those people to live in His dependence, and this is called faith. 
faith in what? In what God had promised, which was to multiply them exceedingly, exceedingly. I will bless you. So we need to live, when we live by faith, in faith, and from faith to faith, then we live depending day after day after day on what God promised in the pledge of his word, in the covenant, the marriage, the matrimony that he made with us, that he made with Abraham. He said, walk before me and I will multiply you. Before that, he said, and I will make my covenant between me and you. The covenant there is not a ring that we carry in the finger. It's not gold. It's the word of God. It's the promise of God. The word of God is the promise of God. His promise. So when we walk by faith, we walk believing in this promise regardless of the problems and the circumstances and hardships that we face in our daily lives. You are going through problems and hardships. We all are. We all face problems. Do you think that Esther and I are always walking on a red carpet, in a bed of roses, in a flowered garden, very fragrant? No, my friend. We all have problems. We all have moments of difficulties, of pain, of suffering, of desert. However, we also know, because we've been through so many deserts, we know that one more or one less won't make any difference, because the desert, the previous deserts, made us have experience, and then we become stronger. We are no longer like a child, not at all. We know that the desert of today proclaims the promised land of tomorrow. We know that the stones of today will conduct us to the garden of the blessing. So God said to Abraham, and I will make my covenant between me and you. God promised that, a marriage, a word. So the word of God was the covenant that Abraham carried with himself, God's covenant within his brain, his intelligence, his reasoning. So God is with me. If he would feel if he was looking around uh, and feeling according to the heart, he was going to get desperate because the heart wants to just feel and nothing else. But he was walking according to what God promised. God had promised. So he waited the, for the fulfillment of this word. He waited. He would rely on that. The Lord said that he was going to bless me, that he would make a covenant. The promise is the covenant and that he would multiply me exceedingly. Exceedingly. And Abraham was 99 years old. 99 years old. And his wife, Byron, how was he going to be multiplied exceedingly? God is God. He promised, then Abraham waited. Hold on, stay strong. I will bless you. My dear friend, tonight we are going to be here in the Temple of Solomon at 8 p.m., for this exact reason, to bring to you, or better, to bring people who are interested in learning, not in feeling, don't come to feel. Because in my meetings, we work with people's intelligence, with reasoning, with what is written, with what is promised. We work with God's covenant, the word tonight at 8 p.m. And tomorrow as well, we are going to be 
in the Love Therapy at 8 p.m. alongside Cristiani and Renato. You are my special guest. May God bless you, and until then, in the name of Jesus. Amen.